Get all of our humble, hearty, and healthy autumn recipes in one place. Download our free mobile-friendly PDF. Link is in the description. My Irish oat pancakes bring together some of the best things in Irish cuisine. Oats, buttermilk, and autumn blackberries. These all combine to make a delicious American-style pancake that's topped with raw honey, clotted cream, and my low-sugar blackberry coulis or blackberry sauce. So let's get baking. So we're going to get right into it and I'm going to combine all of the dry ingredients. So that's my organic wheat flour with my homemade easy oat flour, some baking soda and some salt and you want to combine those really really well. Next, I'm gonna whisk up my wet ingredients. I'm gonna add my honey to my eggs. So once that's combined, add in your buttermilk. Oats have a special place in the heart of Irish cuisine. They were easy to grow and they were cheaper than wheat, so a lot of Irish people depended on them to live. Our oat pancake recipe can trace their roots back to this time in Irish history. Now I'm going to add the wet into the dry ingredients. And remember, you can get this recipe on tradish.net. Since we want a beautiful, fluffy and light American style pancake, you really want to be sure that you do not overmix this. And if you see some lumps, that's fine. This is a lumpy batter. This is all mixed up. It's a great texture. It still is a bit lumpy, but I've been sure to scrape the bottom, make sure you get all of that flour in the bottom. We're gonna cover it and then we're gonna leave it. Leave it out at room temperature for maybe 20 to 40 minutes, or if you're not baking them that day or baking them later in the day, put them in the fridge and they'll last easily up to two days in the fridge. Now our batter is happy resting and we're going to get started on my low sugar blackberry coulis or blackberry sauce. We're going to want to let it simmer in a little bit of water until it's soft and has broken down really well. Once your blackberry coulis is done, you're going to blend it until it's smooth. And now we're going to sweeten it to taste with some raw honey. Then strain it and you can have it hot or cold. Mm. So our batter is done. It's bubbly and slightly springy. It's definitely ready. I'm preheating my cast iron skillet. If you wanna know why we love cooking with cast iron skillets on Tradish, check the link in the description box below. Be sure to add in your batter by the spoonful. If you make your pancakes any bigger, since they're such a lovely, soft American style pancake, they won't flip properly. Then add in a couple of blackberries per pancake. They only need a couple of minutes per side. When your delicious fluffy pancakes are done, stack them, spread each one with raw honey, top it off with clotted cream, and then some of your lovely low sugar blackberry coulis. And this is our Irish oat pancakes done. I'm so excited to try it, it looks so good. Goodness. Don't want to ruin my stacking. Get a little bit of that coolie in there. Mmm. Mmm. It is really, really, really tasty. Super, super soft and moist and fluffy. And they taste oaty. Lovely and sweet from the berries and the richness of the clotted cream. Oh my god, this is so good. Humble, hearty, healthy food. It is absolutely scrumptious. Head over to trish.net and check out this recipe. If you like it, leave a comment. Keep it traditional. Do you want to easily build a website that is mobile friendly, loads quickly and has built-in e-commerce? We use Banzoogle. Start your 30-day free trial today. Link is in the description. When you buy ingredients for traditional recipes, make sure to sign up to Amazon Prime. Get a 30-day trial for free next day delivery. Link is in the description. Today, we are making the 
ultimate easy and quick no need bread recipe, my traditional Irish soda bread. So let's get baking. <laughs> In a large bowl, I'm gonna combine all of my dry ingredients. I'm using my favorite organic heritage wheat, and I'm gonna add in some baking soda and salt. And I'm just gonna mix that up with my hand. So in my time, I've tried plenty of Irish soda bread recipes, and I found that I prefer the type that has a little bit of sweetness. So I'm gonna add some raw honey to mine, and I'm gonna combine it with my buttermilk. Buttermilk is the byproduct of butter making. It's slightly acidic, and it gives the bread a lovely tang and an amazing texture, much like my pancakes, which you can get if you go into tradish.net. The introduction of sodium bicarbonate in the 19th century in Ireland revolutionized Irish baking. No longer did people have to wait around for bread to rise in proof because of yeast. Baking soda allowed families in Ireland to make bread instantly with baking soda. So to my bowl, I'm adding my buttermilk and my buttermilk and honey mixture. So to mix these ingredients up, I'm gonna use my hand and I'm gonna form a claw. And I'm gonna mix them together in a circular clockwise motion. So this is supposed to be a slightly sticky dough, kind of on the wetter side, but not too wet. So my hands are washed and are very thoroughly dry. I'm gonna tip out my mixture onto a very well floured surface. And to do this, I'm gonna use my trusty bench scraper. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over on itself a couple of times in the flour, and then I'm gonna shape it into a round. This doesn't take very much effort at all. Now I'm gonna form it into a circle. For baking, cut an X or a cross shape into your dough. And don't be shy, you want this to be quite deep. It gives it the distinctive Irish soda bread look and it also helps it to rise. Now use your bench scraper to help you lift it onto your lined tray. Pop this into a really hot oven for a few minutes and then turn the heat down so it can finish baking. Our beautiful Irish soda bread is all done. I'm just gonna slice into it and I'm gonna butter it. I'm so looking forward to it. Mm. I'm try it now. Mm. Even though this is what would be considered kind of a heavy bread. It's still, it's very light thanks to that buttermilk and we didn't over mix it. And you taste a bit of that sweetness. It's just delicious. This is the definition of harshy food. It's the perfect companion for Dublin coddle or Irish stew or really harshy soup, or even as I like to enjoy it, which is just covered in butter and a bit of raw honey and a cup of tea. So make sure that you try this, you will not regret it. It is delicious. Check it out on tradish.net and keep it tradish. For the full recipe, head to tradish.net. The link is in the description. Here at Tradish, we're all about humble, hearty and healthy food with a little bit of history. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to cook the most traditional Irish Halloween meal that you've never heard of. It's Dublin Coddle with Colcannon. Let's get cooking. So I'm gonna get started on the Dublin Coddle and I'm gonna start browning my onions. So I'm just gonna put my fat in here. So I'm gonna start sauteing my onions. I'm just gonna add in about half. I wanna reserve about that much. A coddle is a sausage and potato stew. So people in Dublin on a Thursday night would have tried to use up all of their meat and some veg before Friday because on Fridays in Roman Catholic Ireland, they couldn't eat meat. So that's where it originates from. And actually not many people outside of Dublin would know what coddle is. It's kind of like the county dish of Dublin. 
I'm happy with these onions. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my rashers. So I've just thrown in some roughly chopped parsley and thyme in there and oh, smells really, really good. So I'm just gonna add in my stock now. I'm gonna let this come to a simmer and then I'm gonna add in all of my sausages. Mm, it's already starting to smell like coddle. I'm getting that lovely, savory, herby, sausagey smell. And I'm gonna add in my potatoes now. So I'm just gonna let this simmer away gently for probably another 10 to 12, maybe 15 minutes. I've just checked the sausages and potatoes. This is pretty much done. It's only taken about 20 minutes. It's, it's smelling great. The sausages are definitely ready. They're juicy. The potatoes, I can pierce it with a knife. I'm gonna finish these off with just some herbs. So Cool Cannon is actually known as the national Halloween dish of Ireland. It originates probably all the way back to the 1700s. It's mashed potato with sauteed kale or cabbage and onion. So my pan is nice and hot. I'm actually gonna start to saute my cabbage. You'll want to use cabbage and onion. Potatoes are perfectly cooked. I've drained them and I've just put them in a big bowl. I'm gonna add some butter and get them ready for mashing. I've just creamed my potatoes. I'm gonna add in my sauteed cabbage and onion now. I'm also gonna add in some chopped scallions and some pepper to finish that off. I'm just gonna mix that up. My cannon is ready and my Dublin cold is ready and I'm gonna dish up now. I'm really excited, I'm so hungry, I can't wait to taste this. And we're done, I've just dished up our Dublin coddle with our cold cannon our most Irish Halloween meal that you've probably never heard of, and I just can't wait to taste it. It smells really herby and earthy, savory from those sausages and the rashers. There's a lot of potato here, but it won't be an Irish dish without a lot of potato. So I'm just gonna taste this and see how, how it is. Mm. Oh, this is coddle. This is how I remember my mom making it on Halloween night. She'd serve up a lovely bowl of coddle with colcannon. Brings me right back. I'll taste some of that cool cannon. I could just eat this whole bowl. It's, it's, it's really good. And guys, you have to try this recipe. It's really simple food. It's humble. This is real Irish food. Be sure to keep it your dish. I can't see that just straight face. Get all of our humble, hearty, and healthy autumn recipes in one place. Download our free mobile friendly PDF. Link is in the description. This is Tradish. We're bringing you humble, hearty, and healthy meals. And today we're doing the final part to our Irish themed Halloween meal. That is a traditional Irish tea brack. Let's get cooking. To start, I'm gonna prepare the dried fruit for our cake. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add in my homemade mixed spice. Let's give that a mix up. And then I'm gonna add in my tea. So this is hot tea. I'm just gonna cover this with cling film and it'll sit out at room temperature for a minimum of four hours or overnight. Some people think that barren brack came from the word for speckled. So like speckled bread or speckled cake. But there are some who think that barn actually refers to people scooping off the yeasty foam of fermented drinks to make their tea brack with yeast. Here at Tradish, we want to make healthy food. So we've substituted sugar for raw honey. And we've also included an ancient heritage wheat grain that's organic and it's really easy on your blood sugar levels and it makes a delicious cake. So let's get baking. To start off with, I'm gonna add in my dry ingredients and mix them all together. I'm gonna to add in my baking soda. And I'm also gonna add in a pinch of salt. I'm just gonna combine them together. 
So next I'm just gonna add in my egg and my honey mixture. And I'm just gonna mix those to combine. I'm happy with that, you don't wanna over mix your cake. And now I'm gonna add in my dried fruit mixture. I'm really happy with this texture. It's nice and sloppy, and that's the type of texture you're looking for, is a sloppy texture. And that's all there is to it. I'm just gonna add it to my greased and lined loaf tin. So I'm gonna throw this into a preheated oven. And the thing is that when you're baking with raw honey, there are several things that you wanna do differently than baking with sugar. So firstly, you wanna make sure that you're baking at a lower heat because honey can actually caramelize a lot quicker than sugar can. And in my recipe on Tradish.net, I've listed a whole bunch of ways and tips and tricks that you can look out for when you're baking with honey. So I've just put that in the oven and you'll wanna check in around the hour and a half mark with a toothpick just to make sure it's cooked through. But don't be surprised if you're gonna cook it for a further 30 minutes or so. Our lovely Irish tea brack is done. It smells delicious, it looks beautiful and golden. It's lovely and firm to the touch. It's a beautiful color. I'm really, really happy with it and I can't wait to dig in. So I'm gonna cut this open, see what it looks like. I'm gonna do a couple of slices here. Oh wow, that's so beautiful and moist. Look at that, oh my goodness. So I'm just gonna have a taste and see. That's incredible. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet. You have to try this. It's simple, it's delicious. It's a real taste of Ireland, especially at this time of year. So head over to tradish.net and get the recipe. I have to enjoy this with 